I'm all in. Without looking? Without looking. I'm not looking. I haven't looked. I don't care. I know it's a random hand, and I know I've got a random hand. I wouldn't lie. You, can, you didn't look at either looked. card. Did you look at your cards at all? I mean, it's... Look, the it, people at home, no, I haven't looked. Well, if you haven't looked, I guess I'll just move in. Right. Phil Ships and Tony Calls. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we admire those who bluff well and disdain those who lie? In both cases, we're saying things that aren't true, that mislead. But there's a difference between them. We sense it intuitively, though it's hard to define exactly what the distinction is. And, the closer we come, the blurrier it gets. The question about the bluffing lying difference leads to economics, money, and negotiation. In a widely read article, titled, Is Business Bluffing Ethical? Author Albert Carr makes two claims. First, falsehood ceases to be falsehood when it is understood on all sides that the truth is not expected to be spoken. In other words, it isn't lying, if people aren't assuming honesty. As happens for example, at a comedy show. Importantly, this doesn't mean people are expecting false words and claims. Instead, they don't know what to expect. What's coming may be dependable. Or, it may not be. The only certainty, is uncertainty. And, in that environment, Lying can't exist because the meaning of words goes beyond the truth and lies opposition. Just like the words of a joke are neither true nor false, but humorous. So too, bluffing is misleading, but not lying. Second, Carr suggests that this untruth, which is nevertheless not a lie, is an exact description of bluffing as it exists in poker, and in diplomacy, and in business. So, this is a strange reality. One that may be called bluffing. But no matter the name, it's an environment where you're allowed to intentionally mislead others. Where you can contradict the truth, and still, not be, a liar. Let's see what this looks like again, at the poker table. Keep focused on this player's glancing eyes. While everyone is distracted by the man in the dark jacket talking, he quickly looks at his cards. Right there. Here. He surreptitiously looks again. Tony. I'm all in. Pot limit bra. Without looking? Without looking. You can imagine what's coming next. I'm not looking. I haven't looked. Did you look at your cards at all? I mean, it's... Look, the it... people at home, no, I haven't looked. Well, if you haven't looked, I guess I'll just move in. Right. Phil Ships and Tony Calls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're close. You're up there. Oh, you lied. Of course I lied. It's wow. poker, Phil. What do you think this is? Why would you lie? I mean, no, it's, let's it's... consider totally un not uncool, man. That's horrible etiquette to say you didn't look at your hand and then... I'm so a poker you're, you're the kind of guy that goes to the golf course and when someone's playing you a big money match, you scream in the really? middle of their back swing. You think that's the same thing? Yes, I, I know it's the same, the same thing. thing. It's not clear whether lying at the poker table is the same as screaming and interrupting a rival's golf shot. It is evident though, that conflicts involving truth, bluffs, and lies, arise constantly in the economic world. Here are two examples. In both, what's not in dispute is that misleading information gets provided, abundantly. It's harder to articulate though, exactly if, and when, the misleading converts from bluffing into lying. The first example deals with negotiating to buy a car. The man starts off by asserting that people constantly ask him about the subject. And so, he implies, he must be an expert. Everyone will have to decide for themselves, whether that is truth, lie, or bluff. People are always asking me how to negotiate a car. So here are my top tips for getting the best deal for you. Well, you find out what the overall price is and then you flinch. What do I mean by flinch? You go, wow, that's a bit more expensive than I was expecting to pay. Um, what can you do to help me? Now, usually car salespeople are really trained well on this and they'll say, well, that's the price. 
and they say, well, if you are going to buy this car, I might go and see the sales manager and see what he can do. And these fictitious sometimes sales managers who don't exist is just a way of negotiating the price. Ask about what extras they might throw in uh, and even free servicing. They'll say the service department is a different department and they can't give you a discount on that. Don't believe them. Keep pushing them. And then this is what I do. I uh, walk out. Now I've tried this three times and three times it's worked. It's when you get to the door of the car showroom walking out, the salesperson goes, oh Derek, oh how stupid of me. I can't believe I'd forgotten. We'd had a special email down giving extra discounts this morning, but I didn't have time to read it. Come back in, sit down and let's see if I can, through this head office offer, get you another hundred pounds off. The second example of bluffing versus lying involves renting a car and the story of a young man who believes he was cheated. Just as background, the guy is apologizing to his online followers because he reviewed a regular Land Rover as the turbocharged version. As for the uh, Range Rover Sport, um, the guy said he paid 74 grand for it brand new and he said it was supercharged, but I'm starting to believe he just said that to make people believe it is supercharged just to get people to rent his car. I mean, it was a great car, don't get me wrong. It was nice to drive. It had plenty of power. So you don't really need the supercharger, but still, very misleading. And when I did the 0 to 60 video, I knew something was fishy when I didn't hear a supercharger whine. And then I also looked at some other people's videos and I thought, Ah, huh, there's a supercharged indicator on the dashboard. Why isn't it on my rental car? Well, turns out it isn't supercharged. I've just been gypped. Can you believe that? That's the right question. And answering becomes very difficult when there's uncertainty about whether and which business transactions are like poker games.